So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. Now, listen, we back for some more conspiracy theories and the unexplained mysteries of ancient history. All right, we're gonna get into this next video real quick, but before we do, if you knew, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, join the fam, and hit that like button for more content, man. All right, and all we ask is just look at things from multiple perspectives, bro. Look at it from different angles. That's it. Now let's check out the video. The Euphrates has been the cradle of civilization in West Asia. The river has been the lifeline for millions in Iraq and Syria. And this site is estimated to be nearly three and a half thousand years old. He said the sighting three consecutive years of low precipitation and reduced river flow. Since the Euphrates River is on its brink to becoming completely dry, many Christians are keeping a close check on its development. This is because the Euphrates River is mentioned in the Bible in connection with the fall of four angels after the river has completely dried up. However, very recently, a disturbing footage shows a location that made unusual sounds. It was reported that the location was on the Euphrates River and the sound came from under the ground that came out through a breach. The people who lived in the area believed that the voice was the voice of fallen angels that were imprisoned so that they could make a sound like they were asking for help. What does this mean for people all around the world? And is the prophecy that was written in the Bible coming true? Is it possible that these noises are being made by angels who have been cast down in today's video, we investigate the mysterious sounds that were captured in a clip that has believers all around the world in a state of shock. Iraq is experiencing the worst drought it has seen in decades. Communities who rely on the Tigris and Euphrates River for their source of water have been left without the water they need to survive due to a lack of precipitation as well as poor management of their resources. This is scary, man. Every time they talk about this, I just think about the people, man. I feel so bad for the people, you know? And it's ignorant people out there that'll be like, oh, so why they don't just move? Are you kidding me? Like, literally, people say that in the comment section. Well, why don't they just move? And I'm just like, bro, are you serious? Like, come down off the high horse a little bit. Be amongst the people, embrace that, feel that, and understand if they could, they probably would. But it ain't that easy. It ain't that easy. I'm pretty sure you know people that are stuck in jobs that they don't want to be at because they can't move or they can't transition to something else at the moment. It ain't just easy to just pick up and leave. Like, ah, oh man, that irks me, man. I'm sorry, but that, that just irks me to because people actually say that. His river for their source of water have been left without the water they need to survive due to a lack of precipitation as well as poor management of their resources. In order to prevent the crops in the Kurdistan region of the country from drying up, the authorities in charge of the Mossel Dam Reservoir did some draining in the month of January. It turned out that the decision helped save more than just the crops Archaeologists had only a few days to examine the area before the waters returned, but they were able to successfully map what they believed to have been a major city in the Mitanni Empire built 3,400 years ago. This ancient city emerged from the area that had been drained, and they had only a few days to do so. When the dam was constructed in the 1980s, residents of the area were aware that the city had been in that location However, the structures and artifacts that had survived the earthquake that had destroyed the city around 1350 BCE had never been thoroughly explored. According to a study that was published in 2018 by Smithsonian Magazine's Jason Daly at the time, certain portions of the metropolis initially emerged from the depths during a catastrophic drought. During that short period of time, researchers were able to investigate a long lost palace that had gigantic walls that were approximately six feet thick and 22 feet high. Inside those walls, they found remains of wall paintings in vibrant shades of red and blue. However, the archeologists did not have sufficient time to adequately map the settlement before the waters began to rise again. Y'all know what this makes me think of? Like, 
the reference points to certain things in the Bible, um, scriptural passages and different things like that, they could be pointing us in the direction of something. You know, they could be reference points for us to go look in these areas. Okay, we say, okay, this is where the angels are, and we'll we'll start to hear them once the water dries up, and this is all taking place, and we're starting to see. Instead of us, okay, fearing and running away from it, we should really research this area like they're doing and look what they're finding. So they could be reference points to tell us without telling us where we need to look for certain things. Where if we want to know our, our the history of this planet, of previous civilizations, different things like that, maybe it was pointed out in the text for us to look in these places when certain things happen. Maybe they have reference points, if that makes sense to you. It just seems interesting that this stuff presents itself and we start finding all of this type of stuff. And it was it was kind of made reference to in this specific pa passage in the Bible. So to me, that's just sound like just like a huge arrow saying, hey, look here without saying, hey, look here. You, you get what I'm saying? They found creative ways to do things or say things or. Or, or give you clues and hints to where you kind of need to focus your attention, if you get that. Feet high. Inside those walls, they found remains of wall paintings in vibrant shades of red and blue. Look at there. However, the archaeologists did not have sufficient time to adequately map the settlement before the waters began to rise again. So when the drought struck yeah, again this year, a study team was formed in a matter of days to rush out to the site, according to a statement from the University of Tübingen. The University of Freiburg provided researchers with short notice financing to investigate as much of the city as possible before it was resubmerged. Archaeologists now have a better idea of what this ancient metropolis would have looked like as a result of the team's charting of multiple massive buildings and the discovery of hundreds of artifacts. An industrial complex, a fortification with wall and towers, and a multi-storey storage building were among the structures discovered. The enormous magazine building is of particular significance because enormous quantities of goods must have been stored in it probably brought from all over the region, says Ivana Pulgis, an assistant professor of archaeology at the University of Freiburg, in a statement. The expedition's leader, Hassan Ahmed Qasim, chairman of the Kurdistan Archaeology Organization, says the excavation results show that the site was an important center in the Mitanni Empire. Exactly. But if we didn't have that reference point of saying, hey, when the Euphrates start to dry up, then this means this, we would have never known to look there for anything. We would have never known to pay attention to that. So I, I'm just starting to think that a lot of this stuff is like little clues to say, hey, pay attention here without saying pay attention here. Like this stuff is important. Otherwise, the Euphrates River would have just been something that dried up and nobody, if it didn't have any context to it, nobody would have even cared. We got so many other things going on. AI, uh, chat GPT, uh, war in Ukraine, Russia. All this stuff is going on. Different things. The election, Donald Trump, all this stuff. Everything's going on to distract us right now. So we had to have some kind of way to divert our attention to say, hey, no, no, no. This is key for some reason. The team was impressed at how effectively several of the walls, which were composed of sun-dried mud, and had been submerged for more than 40 years had been kept. This is most likely because of the earthquake that destroyed the city. It transformed the upper parts of the walls into rubble, burying and protecting the city for ages. Wow. It's probable that the location is the ancient city of Zakiku, which was a significant center in the Mitanni Empire from 1500 to 1350 BCE. The empire covered slightly over 600 miles ranging from the Zagros Mountains to the Mediterranean Sea, and was one of several kingdoms and republics created by the Indo-Iranians in Mesopotamia and Syria. However, very recently, a video emerged from this area that is both exceedingly strange and for many people extremely terrifying. What? Have the noises of the four fallen angels that are trapped beneath the Euphrates River been recorded? What about the sounds of the scorpion-like beast that will be unleashed from the earth when the bottomless pit in Revelation 9 is opened? A video that purports to show archaeologists working at the site of the dried-up Euphrates River 
has just lately been made public. The video also claims to have caught the sounds of fallen angels or of monsters that are imprisoned within the bottomless pit. We must emphasize that these noises might simply be fabricated, and this is far from proof, especially since we only have one video. We do, however, know that there are four angels that are chained at the Euphrates River, and that once they are unleashed, they will murder one third of men with 200 million horsemen. This is something that we have been told in the Bible. Now what the does the Bible say about now the how, how did they say it? Once they are unleashed, they will murder one third of men with 200 million horsemen. Murder one third of men with 200. One Once they are unleashed, they will murder one third of men with 200 million horsemen. 200 million horsemen. One third of men with 200 million horsemen. Right. That sounds like what a lot of those people are going to suffer due to the drought. Right. That affects them and in, in a lot of things that they do over there. Right. So that could be what the reference is for the angels. This river dries up. This could mean this. And we're seeing it. You're seeing um, what they were saying about the people. They had to move if they can. A lot of them don't have the ability to move, but them, them, they're going to have to move, right? But a lot of people won't make that trip successfully. A lot of them will pass away, unfortunately, due to starvation, lack of water, like resources, like all of that type of stuff like that. So that could be the reference point that it's referring to. You know, it's not everything to me isn't always black and white. It isn't going to say the Euphrates River is going to dry up. Then then these people are going to lose their life because of no water and lack of resources and different things like that. It don't always come like that to us. We have to be able to read through the, between the lines and decipher things. And I think that's what it ultimately means in this situation. And that once they are unleashed, they will murder one third of men with 200 million horsemen. This is something that we have been told in the Bible. What does the Bible say about these fallen angels? In Revelation 9, 13, 21, the following is said. 13. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. 14. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. 15. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. 16. The number of the mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000. I heard their number. 17. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. 18. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. 19. The power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails were like snakes, having heads with which they inflict injury. 20. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands, they did not stop worshipping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood. Idols that... Ooh. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of their work of their hands. They did not stop worshipping demons. We talked about that the other day, man. It's a lot of people that... And it was in that Ask Alexa about... A lot of people are asking about different demons and stuff like that, which makes that interesting. I'm telling y'all, man, we on the right path. Um, idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood. Idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Man, people who put their lot of stock in, in different things and values, man. These are still plagues, bro. These are still plagues. Money, power, different things, man. Be ultimately be our demise. Seriously. Like, resources is always a battle over resources whatever it be oil different things you ever notice that leads to what a lot of war fighting and different things like that why because they want those resources and they want control over those resources man don't get us started
It leads, it will ultimately be our demise. Some people have talked about, maybe that's why we haven't seen extraterrestrials yet, because they're watching us destroy our own selves. Cannot see or hear or walk. 21. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their Ooh. thefts. Ooh. These are the words of a voice that John hears emanating from the four horns of the Ooh. golden altar, which is recounted in Exodus 27.2. This voice instructs the sixth angel with the trumpet to release the four angels imprisoned at the Euphrates River, the ancient border between Assyria and Israel. Revelation informs us once more that God is ultimately in charge of these occurrences, allowing or declaring each one. Evil is never allowed to run completely rampant in the end of times. Because they are described as bound, we know they are demonic beings. Demons are fallen angels who are often bound in chains of gloomy darkness, 2 Peter 2.4. God's good angels, like some of Satan's angels slash demons, are not chained but free. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places, Ephesians 6.12 says. The Euphrates Valley, where these four angels are imprisoned, has a long history of human wickedness. The first murder was presumably perpetrated near the Garden of Eden in the Euphrates region, Genesis 4.8. In that territory, the first fighting confederacy was formed, Genesis 14. Nimrod established his kingdom there, Genesis 10.8-12. Babylonian idolatry arose in the area and will be judged there, Zechariah 5, Revelation 18. Revelation 9, 13 to 21 provides further insight into the assault by the northern invader. Earlier in chapter 9, we learn of a swarm of demonic locusts rising from the bottomless pit. We are now told that there are 200 million strongly equipped cavalrymen whose horses have lion's heads and snake tails. Four angels stationed on the Euphrates River allow the evil army to cross the river. The locust swarm described previously may control or perhaps possess these 200 million cavalrymen. The annihilation of one third of humanity follows. The remainder of humanity, on the other hand, refuses to repent of their terrible deeds, idolatry, murders, sorcery, or sexual immorality. This northern army's invasion of Israel is also prophesied in Joel 2 and Ezekiel 38. The goal of punishment is to bring people to repentance, yet it mostly fails. As a result, we infer that the entire judgment depicts the spiritual horrors that torment the sinful in this life, and which serve as foretaste of their doom in the life to come. Sin typically brings unrest and trouble in its wake. Rarely, if ever, does it provide serenity and satisfaction. The stings so basically saying around, or this is what I'm interpreting, right? Around the time that the Euphrates River starts to dry up, we're running wild. We're pretty much running Wow. And I would say that that kind of lines up when if you look at everything in a whole, right? Everything in a whole right now, if you just pull up social media, what are you going to see? Us running rampant. Us running wild, crazy. Whether it's your news feeds where you're seeing this type of shooting, this type of incidents happen, this type of stuff happening, or you're seeing people get scammed. You seeing people, all they, they praising this money, gold, and all these, all this type of stuff, right? Like everything that was covered in there, you can go right to social media and see us running rampantly wild. It's crazy when you think about it and you align things up. Of sin may be more severe because their effects are frequently unseen by the wider population. In summary, Revelation 9 describes a star falling from heaven to earth during the fifth trumpet judgment. Satan is this star, and he is granted the key to the bottomless pit. Using this key, Satan unleashes a plague of locust-like supernatural demons. They torture unbelievers for five months with such agony that people seek death in vain. They resemble fighting horses, and they have a monarch named Apollyon, which means destroyer. John witnesses the release of four angels from the Euphrates River during the sixth trumpet judgment. 
Their release coincides with the breakout of a horde of 200 million demonic mounted troops who destroy one third of humanity. The survivors on the other hand, refuse to leave their worship and repent of their terrible crimes. Do you believe the Bible's prophecies are coming true? Are these the voices of fallen angels? Tell us about it in the comments section below. If you look at it the way we were talking about, I, I would definitely say they're definitely in line. It's definitely a way to look at it. It's definitely a perspective to see. I, I see it lining up, man. Everything they spoke about there and the passages that I read just then, it just made me think about where we are as a society, where we are. What do we place our stock in right now? Money, gar clothes, flashy things, everything like that. Like I said, the news, what's going on in the news, the fighting, the, 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 the all of that. Scamming's at an all time high. You don't know who to trust. Like we're being divided it's 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 crazy man it's it's definitely out of control so but i'm interested to see how y'all interpret these things you can have a completely different interpretation than i did and that's totally fine that's what we want we want different perspectives man and different look at it don't only take my view that's my view what's your view put it in the comment section all right and uh y'all stick around and stay tuned man leave a like share the video and subscribe to the next one i'm gone peace